Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So if you're new to this channel, hi, I'm Rebecca. But if you're already subscribed, welcome back. So previously, I did an overview of first year of medical school and you guys loved it. If you guys haven't checked that out, you can click the link over here. Basically, in medical school, each year gets more and more challenging just because of the things that you will have to learn. The system just gets more and more complicated. So today, I'm finally able to give you an overview of second year of medical school just because I have survived two years of medical school. Alright, so just before we start, I would like to remind you guys that everything that I'll be talking about is based on Malaysia's education system, so it might differ depending on which country you are in. Even if you are in Malaysia, each university will have different planning for their students. Just want to let you guys know that. So the first part for this overview will be about the theory. So for International Medical University, the university that I'm in, our second year consists of two semesters, which is semester three and semester four. For each semester, it takes about 3 to 4 months to complete it. Starting off with semester 3, we learn 3 systems which is GI, renal and endocrine. Out of these 3 systems, I feel that GI was the heaviest topic because we had more lectures compared to renal and endocrine. Basically for GI, it is very very heavy on anatomy. You will have to learn about your digestive system, how it works, the enzymes that are being secreted to digest your food. So it's quite heavy in terms of anatomy but if you like it it will be fine you will definitely have to have constant repetition understanding and memorization maybe not so much of memorization because you'll forget it easily if you just plainly memorize so the thing is you will have to understand every single detail of it so that it can stick to your head better so for this system i use a lot of anatomy books especially the natus books because i need to visualize it like i can't cut open someone's body right so i need to see it in pictures so I use a lot of anatomy books. If you're curious about how the Natter's anatomy book looks like, you can click the link over here as well. Personally, I really really enjoy GI. I didn't think it was that hard. So yeah, it's just personal preference. If you are in your GI system right now or you are going to your GI system, if you don't like it, it's fine. It's just me. <laughs> For renal system, it is quite easy because we have less lecture notes compared to our GI system. One thing I realized while studying for renal is that all of the information was just repetitive so you will just consistently see like renal cysts, renal stones and how like renal stones causes inflammation and stuff like that. Throughout the whole module, it was just constant repetition of information. For renal system, it's very interesting for me but I didn't really like the part regarding the electrolyte balance. I find that a little bit difficult especially like how this condition can cause hypokalemia or hyperkalemia and stuff like that. I guess it's not something that is undoable. If you constantly read and you constantly try to understand, you will understand it somehow. I definitely use a lot of physiology textbooks because I just need it. So for endocrine system, a lot of them find it easy. Actually it is but I don't know why for me it's so hard to stick to my head. There are a lot of hormones for you to memorize and understand. Actually, it's quite interesting to study about hormones because you get to see how two very different hormones act towards each other and what it does to our body. You will definitely have to make mind maps and notes while referring to your lecture notes and textbooks because this is just gonna help you so much and it's gonna make understanding hormones better and easier. So at the end of our semester 3, we have our first professional exam. Oh my god, it was the most tiring, exhausting, stressful period in the first one and a half years of being in medical school. While learning the new systems in semester 3, we had to revise our semester 2. So it was pretty hectic. So for our first professional exam part 1, it consisted of two components. The first one would be theory and the second would be our OSCE. So theory carries about 40% and OSCE about 60%. You will have to pass both components in order for you to move on on semester 4. Uh, my friends and I, we started prepping for this examination at the start of our semester 3. I'm so thankful for that because even though it was quite hectic but it was manageable, I can't imagine if I started out last minute. I would sleep late and I would wake up early just to get enough time to practice and also to study 
because honestly 24 hours per day for that period wasn't enough I won't talk about FPP much in this video because I want to make a separate video on it just to talk about the whole process and some things that you guys have to know so stay tuned for that video alright so for semester 4 we also had three systems we have reproductive musculoskeletal and also central nervous system but even though semester 3 was challenging because of our first professional exam semester 4 is on another level it's crazy two out of three system in semester four was just so complicated and it's so much to memorize so we started off semester four pretty good we started with reproductive system and it was the easiest system out of the three systems that we had to learn for semester four so for me reproductive system was quite easy and it was quite fun because we get to learn about the reproductive system of both male and also female some of the things that you'll be learning are like menstrual cycle how fertilization takes place and also some common diseases that you will see for children and also fetus i would recommend you to refer to every Bryology books as well but I didn't have them I mainly just google and watch videos on YouTube so for muscular skeletal system oh my god that was literally my first reaction when I had my first lecture for MSK it was just so heavy on anatomy I think we had about 40 lectures and 20 out of it was just plainly anatomy so for msk you'll be basically learning about the bones and also the muscles you'll be learning it by regions arm forearm back chest abdomen thighs legs and feet oh and your hands as well you will definitely have to constantly repeat whatever you have learned and look at the notes as much as you can visualize it by using your anatomy textbook it really helps i personally find teach me anatomy website to be really really useful for msk my most used resources for msk was definitely my anatomy textbooks teach me anatomy website and also youtube for cns it's as challenging as msk but i feel that it's kind of different rather than the anatomy the physiology part is what makes it difficult and you will have to connect multiple neuronal pathways but it's really interesting to learn how your brain interprets information that is coming from different parts of your body like for example how you are able to visualize something how you are able to hear how you balance that's it for part one right now we'll be moving on to part two which is also the fun part because i'll be talking about our clinic visits hospital visits and also our clinical skills section so during our gi and endocrine system we went to clinic kesehatan to see patients so basically during that visit we take history from patients and also learn some procedures from the nurses and doctors during our renal system instead of going to hospitals and also clinic kesehatan we went to the dialysis center that was really fun because it was rather new for all of us we have never been to a dialysis center so when we were at the dialysis center we took history from the patients like usual we get to ask things like how did they first found out that their kidney is damaged and the progress of their disease other than taking history we get to learn about the procedure procedure of doing the dialysis itself so we get to see how the nurses insert the needles in the patient's AV fistula so prior to the first session of the patient's dialysis they will have to undergo surgery to get AV fistula so AV fistula is basically a connection between your artery and also your vein for a normal healthy individual our kidney is the one that helps us to filter our blood and to excrete waste products through our urine but for patients who have kidney damage they are not able to do that they will have to externally filter their blood dialysis machine helps them to do that so basically when the nurses insert the needle from the dialysis machine into their AV fistula it helps to send the blood out to the dialysis machine and returns it back to the body that's why you need an AV fistula during that visit I get to experience something that was a little bit terrifying for me so at the end of the dialysis procedure the nurse would have to take out the needles from the AV fistula Right? yeah i was watching that whole procedure but what was scary of it is that when the nurse pulled out the needle right the patient didn't compress the av fistula that much so blood began to splatter everywhere and i was like oh my god it's something normal for them because he didn't compress it properly and it was very very normal for the nurses over there me as a newbie was like oh my god like what the heck that was a really nice experience for me See me to say nice but 
Yeah. So for semester 4, we only got to go to the KK for reproductive system. So basically, we did the same thing. History taking, looking at pregnant women, learning how to do ultrasound to see the fetus. We didn't get to go to any clinics or hospital for our MSK or CNS because that's when the coronavirus pandemic started. So everything was online. Alright, so right now I'll be talking about the clinical skills session for each semester. So for semester 3, physical examination for GI was pretty complex and a lot for you to remember. Some of the things that you learn is palpate the abdominal region to measure liver span, palpate the spleen. So basically for GI, you would definitely have to practice a lot for you to remember what to do. My only advice for you while you're practicing for GI system is to constantly practice practice and practice just practice we know system the physical examination was rather easy because there's nothing much you can do with the kidney so some of the things that you learn is like renal punch how to ballot the kidney and also monitoring the kidney functions like doing a urine dipstick test if our endocrine system is much more on the history taking part you will have to take a lot of history to diagnose the um, endocrine problems but for physical examination the things that you will learn is like how to assess your thyroid gland and to check whether the patient is hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism and one main component for endocrine system is diabetic patients so you will learn how to assess a patient to see whether they are normal pre-diabetic or diabetic and you will also teach them how to use certain device like insulin pad moving on to semester 4 so starting off with reproductive system so the physical examination for reproductive system was rather interesting so for women we have to carry out physical examinations like breast examination vaginal examination for men we have have to do like prostate examination you will have to learn the proper way of telling the patient how you're going to carry out this examination and also how to make them comfortable around you because showing off your private parts to someone that you don't know can be a little bit uncomfortable and a little bit embarrassing for msk there are a lot of things that you have to do you will have to assess the function of each limb common movements that you have to assess for each limb would be like flexion extension abduction adduction internal rotation and external rotation basically for msk you have to have a lot of strength i was so exhausted when i finished performing the physical examination for msk for the physical examination for cns we assess each cranial nerve for example for cranial nerve number two which is also your optic nerve you will have to assess your visual acuity and also your color vision for cranial nerve number seven which is also known as your facial nerve you will have to assess your facial muscles so for example you ask the patients to lift out their eyebrows like this patient to smile to blow out their cheeks like this so that you can press it and assess the muscle so that's basically it that's my overview of second year of medical school so i just want to share with you guys something when you enter your second year of medical school a lot of people around you will tell you that it's going to be very hard and very difficult and you won't be able to perform well please don't listen to them you are the one who get to decide how hard it's gonna be because once you set your mind that it's gonna be difficult it's gonna be difficult for you if you set your mind that it's gonna be bearable and easy it's gonna be easy for you i have a lot of people around me telling me that second year of medical school is gonna be very hard and i won't be able to perform well i just didn't listen to them it was difficult but it wasn't something that's unbearable for me don't listen to all the negative comments so we have come to the end of the video thank you so much for watching my video don't forget to click the subscribe button down below and give this video a thumbs up i'll see you guys in my next video bye guys